right. Our next part after the deck gun is going to be a slightly more complex object, but by now you should be pretty good, and you probably could actually make much of this yourself. Um, it's going to be using tools that we've already learned by and large already. So we are going to be making this vise here. We have one, two, three, four, five parts on it. Um, actually, six parts. There's one that's hidden. And we're going to put it all together, or make all each, each of the individual parts and put it together, and then look at how we can check things, make sure things actually work in Inventor, and make some changes based off of those checks that we do. So our first object is the base. This is looks fairly complex, but we can actually do this in only about three or four steps. So if we draw the side first, we're going to ignore the feet and we're going to ignore this top thing in this hole. We're going to just draw this side, and then we're going to extrude that back, add this little circle thing on it and the hole, make this cut out through the middle, and then add the feet on both sides, and we'll be done. So let's start by drawing up this side, extruding it, and going from there. So I'm already in a part in Inventor. I'm going to start a 2D sketch. And again, we're going to just go with our front plane, as we usually do. And I'm going to first make a quick change. All right, so I'm going to just change something real quick to make it easier for you to see things. You don't need to do this. There we go. Now my origin's big and easy to see. So I'm going to start off by just sketching the perimeter of this. And I'm going to ignore this circle for now. I'm just going to draw it as a straight line as we usually do now. And if I look at the drawing, we can tell that the height of this is 3 inches, whereas the height of this is way more than 3 inches. So when I draw this next line, do not line it up with that back line. Have it go over it a bit. So here's the general shape of my vise. So let's start dimension. I'm going to click D on my keyboard to dimension. And our overall length of it is a couple dimensions added together. So we need to figure out how long this thing is. And we know from here to here is 1.25. From here to here is 5.25. And then we need to know how long it is from here to here. And we can do that by looking at the side of it. The radius of this circle here is 1.5 inches. So that would mean from here along this line to here would also be 1.5 inches. So even though this is the radius, it's also the linear dimension of this object right here. So I can just add those together. Oops. To get my overall length. And then I'll just keep walking through. I like doing my horizontal dimensions first, typically. I don't know, I just find it easier. And I don't need to put a dimension on here because Inventor already knows that and see it kind of screwed up the software when I tried to do it and I should get an error message saying I can't do that. I could accept it and make it what's called a driven dimension. When I have a dimension in parentheses, that means that I can't edit this dimension. See, I can't edit it but it will change if I change it. So say I made this 8.25, that would then change. So it just kind of tells me what dimension is. So for our purposes right now, it's useless. Now I'm going to add my vertical dimensions. And again, I'm just looking at the drawing that I have that you guys can get from the front of my classroom. And this dimension here, we don't really have. We don't have one from the top to the bottom, but what we do have is from the two inches from here to here. So I could just do that. So I'm going to drag this line up to get it approximate, and then just make that dimension of two inches. All right. So I'm fully dimensioned. It says I'm fully constrained down here. The last thing I need to do is add this circle here. Now this circle cuts off at the top. It's not a perfect circle wrapping around it. Um, so the only thing we know so far is the radius is 1.5 inches, and the center mark of the circle follows along this line here. And then the center mark is 2.625 inches from the very bottom. So I'm going to just take the circle tool, because even though it's an arc, an arc is just part of a circle, I'm going to click anywhere on this line except for the green dot. 
is not in the center. That green dot's the center of that line. I want to click anywhere else. I'm going to just like click right there. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to come out, and this line is tangent to this vertical line. So when I see that tangent symbol there, I'm going to click and right click, click OK. And now all I need to do is see my circle can move up and down. So all I need to do is dimension from the bottom line up to the center point and type in how tall that is, which is 2.625 inches. Now when I click OK, it becomes blue. And we can see, just as we see in here, it kind of cuts off there at the top of the circle. It does the same thing here. So the last thing I need to do with this circle is trim some stuff away from it to make my life a little easier. So I'm going to click Trim and just draw a line through there and there. And we have this extra space there. We're going to just leave that. There's no real point in getting rid of it. So that's the perimeter of our vise. So let's now extrude it. And we see that it's 3.5 inches in diameter or in extrusion length. And I can select either this profile or this one. Well, we clearly want to extrude that one. So I'm going to click OK. And there's the beginning of my vise. All right, let's now move on to the back of it. We have this circle here. That center point is along the center of this object. And then we have a coal cutting through it. And then we also got to do this slot thing cutting through it as well. So I'm going to start with the circle on the top first. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the back of my object. And I don't really like that I can't see where that line is. Like I can click on it and see it, but it's not there. So I'm going to go up here to project geometry and just click on this back surface and outline it in yellow. It'll make it a little easier for me to see what's going on. I'm going to use the circle tool and we're going to draw this outer circle, extrude it back, and then I'm going to cut the hole in with the hole tool afterwards. So that, hole, that circle is in the center of the object, so I'm going to find the center point and click and type in the diameter. Now it gives me a radius of 0.75 inches. So I need to do 0.75 times 2 or 1.5 inches. Now I want to extrude this and I could figure out how deep it extrudes or I can just tell Inventor to extrude this circle from here to this next line. So I'm going to go to extrude by clicking E on my keyboard select the circle, and instead of where it says distance, I'm going to click on that and click on 2. That will then allow me to select where I want to extrude it to. I'm going to want to extrude it to this surface. Because I'm going the other way, Inventor assumes I want to cut it away. You can see there's that little cutout. I don't want to do that. I want to add the material. So up in this middle area, I'm going to select Join, and there we go. It adds the material. Click OK, and there's our circle. Uh, so with that circle, i got to do a hole that's 0.625 inches deep or in diameter and the full depth of that part. So I'm going to click on the hole tool. And remember, I can center a circle on an arc. So I'm going to just click anywhere I want. It doesn't really matter. And then next thing I need to click on is the circle, that arc that we just created. And that will automatically center the circle there. I can put in my diameter. And I don't... If I keep the termination as through all, so it cuts through everything, we can see it cuts through that front part. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with extrude. I'm going to go to 2 and then select that back surface so it just extrudes through there. Click OK, and there's our hole. All right, last step on the back is to make that cut out there. So I'm going to start a sketch on the back of the object. And again, I'm going to just project that geometry to make it a little easier for me to see. And draw that shape. So that shape goes up, over, up, over, and so on. All right, so let's now draw that shape out. So I'm going to just start anywhere along my back line. And draw, and again, I don't really care about dimensions yet because I'm going to go add them later. And I come back down here. I want to make sure I line up with this one. And I want to make sure I end on that back line. And I made sure everything is perpendicular or parallel to each other when I drew it. All right, let's start adding some dimensions. So we can see my inner space up here is 1.25 inches wide. My outer one is 1.5. 
and that made it pop over there. I can fix that by just dragging this line over and kind of fixing that there. Then we need to do our height. So the height for this first one is 1.25 here, and then it goes 2.125. And while we have all of our dimensions, the whole object can move. First, I can go like this. Uh oh, that's not good. And also, this can move the same way. So this line here and this line here need to be the same dimension because this smaller cutout is centered on this larger cutout. So I can use a constraint to do that. So far, we've used the tangent constraint, the horizontal and vertical constraint. But I can also use the equal constraint here to make two lines equal to each other. Or in the picture on this, I can make two circles equal to each other. So I click on equal, and I'm just going to click on these two lines. And that will lock them together. You can see there's those equal constraint signs. And now when I drag it, they stay the same dimension. But my object still can move back and forth. As I never told Inventor where this object actually lays on here. So it is centered on this back part, which we can infer then would mean that the center point of this line and the center point of this bottom line are on the same plane. So I can use a vertical constraint to say that. The center of this, so I hover over, find that green dot, and the center of this line would be on the same line, and that would then make everything blue and fully constrained, and now nothing moves. All right, so we just need to extrude this, cut it all the way through. So I'm going to click on E on my keyboard, and I'm having trouble selecting this object. I'm going to just zoom in. And typically, I can find somewhere. If I can't, like I can't get just that object selected, I'm going to right click on it and click Select Other. And then it'll give me a list of things I can select in that area. Well, Profile Body 1, you can see, covers everything. Profile Body 2 is only the thing I want to select. So I'm going to click on that, and that allows me to just select that part. Then I'm going to do a cut. And I want to cut all the way through everything, so I'm going to change my distance to all, and that will cut everything away. And there we go so far. All right, we just have a little bit more to do. We just have to do the feet, put them on the other side, and we are done this part. So to draw my feet, these are a little bit more complex than things we've drawn so far. We can see that we have an arc here that has a radius of 0.625 inches. We have some holes that we'll deal with later. I'm going to ignore those. And we have some lines that are tangent to the arc that intersect the side of my object. So drawing this from the top would be really, really difficult. So I'm going to look at it from the bottom and draw it from there. So I'm going to flip my object to the bottom, start a sketch on that surface. I'm just rotating it to make it a little easier for me to see. And I'm going to start by drawing, remember, any arc is really a circle just with part of it missing. So I'm going to just start with drawing two circles. I'm going to draw these two at the same time. And it doesn't matter where they are, I'm going to just draw two circles. I'm then, the, I'm then going to add the diameter of them. So it's 0.625 inches in radius. So 0.625 times 2 is 1.25. And I also can see that the center of that circle is 0.625 inches from the surface of my object. So I'm going to point that dimension too. So the center of the circle to the surface of the object. Can I stop that? Is 0.625 inches. Now these two line up together, so I could use an R dimension, or I could use our trusty horizontal constraint to just lock them together. All right, that's all I have for the circles for dimensions. So now we need to add these lines to it. So I'm going to just draw some lines. And I'm going to select anywhere except for like what's called the quadrant, which is kind of the corner of a circle. So I'm going to just draw a line and connect them. doesn't really matter where I go. Because we're then going to use horizontal constraints and some other constraints to line things up. So I told you earlier that these lines are tangent to this circle. 
So let's do that. I'm going to select the tangent tool, click on the line, click on the circle, and do that for all four lines. Then we can see there's a dimension from one end of the line to the other is two inches. So let's put that in there. We're going to put them on both. And while that's all the dimensions we have, we can still make our lines move. So I could drag this and do some weird things with it. And to fix that, these two lines have to be equal to each other. And that will keep them that dimension centered, essentially. So I'm going to just select the equal constraint and select the two lines. And now they're um, equal to each other. Do it on the same side. And apparently by doing, when I drew my lines, I locked them together. So I made these two lines equal to each other already. So it just won't let me do it. That's perfectly fine because it still solves our problem we have. Now they're still green because I can move them back and forth. So if I look, lastly, I see that they start 0.5 in from each side. So I'm going to just do a dimension from the end to the beginning of my line as 0.5. And there we go. One is blue now. And the other one is blue. And there's my feet. So let's extrude that. I need to select all parts of it. And I want them to go the other way. And they only extrude up 0.375 inches. And there's our feet without the holes. We're going to add the holes later. Now, I need to put these feet on the other side. And you could go and you could redraw it just like you just did again on the other side. But that's a lot of work, and I don't want to do that. So let's mirror them to that other side. To do that, to mirror them, if I were to just click mirror and select my feet, I would need a mirror plane. And I don't have anything in the center of my object that I can click on. Like if I click here, they're going to be off the side. So I need to create a plane going down the middle of my object that I can mirror from. So remember to do that, we click on the plane tool, click on one side, move over to the other side, click on that side, and now we have a plane cutting through the center of our object. Now I can go to the mirror tool, select my feet, click mirror plane, select the work plane, and there we go. They are exactly on the other side. Click OK. And we now have feet on all four sides. Let's hide our work plane now because we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to Right click on it and uncheck visibility. We can't delete it because it would also delete the mirror since they work together. And last thing I need to do on this before I change my material is I need to put those holes cutting through the middle of it. So I'm going to create a sketch on the bottom of my surface. And I just need to put a point wherever the center is. So if I hover over a line, that little dot pops up. I can click to put a point and do that to all four circles. And by doing that, they automatically are constrained. I don't need to dimension them at all. I'm going to click H on my keyboard to get into the hole tool. It will automatically select all four. I just need the diameter of 0.375 inches. And last time we used the hole tool, our termination was to another object. So let's just change that through all because we want to cut through all the feet. Click OK. And there's my holes. So this part is now done, other than checking the mass and changing the material. So we see the material is cast iron. So that is an inventor, iron, comma, cast. And I don't really like that, that dark iron gray color, so let's change the color to something pretty. Like... What was I looking for? Violet. That is hideous, but it works. All right, let's check our mass. And we have a mass of 12.869 pounds. So if that's your mass, then you made everything perfectly. Finally, let's save it. You can click Control S to save. And we go to that engineering drawing folder in our H drive. Make a new folder for Vice and spelled V I S E, not C E. And this is the base of the vice. And this part's done.